let's talk about cases where we need to interpolate be between or back off from one language model to another one. And we'll also touch on the web today. These are cases where it helps to use less context rather than more. And the intuition is, suppose that um, you have a, a very confident trigram. You've seen a trigram a very large number of times. You're very confident this trigram is a good estimator. Well, we should use the trigram. But suppose you only saw it once. Well, maybe you don't really trust that trigram, so you might want to back off and use the bigram instead. And maybe you haven't seen the bigram either, so you might back off to the unigram. So the idea of back off is sometimes if you don't have a, a, a large count or a trustworthy evidence for a larger order n-gram, we might back off to a smaller one. A related idea is interpolation. Interpolation says, well, um, sometimes the trigram may not be useful, and in that case, if we mix trigrams and bigrams and unigrams, well, then we may get more information from the unigrams and bigrams. But other times, trigrams will be more useful. And so interpolation suggests that we just mix all three all the time and, and, um, and get the benefits of all of them. And it turns out, in practice, that interpolation works better than back off. So most of the time in language modeling, we'll be dealing with interpolation. There are two kinds of interpolation. Um, simple linear interpolation, we have um, our unigram, our bigram, and our trigram. And we simply add them together with three weights, lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. Uh, the lambda is just sum to 1 to make this a probability. And, and, um, and, and we can compute our new probability, we'll call it p hat, of a word given the previous two words by, by interpolating these three um, language models. We can do something slightly more complicated. We can condition our lambdas on the context. So we can say, still mix our trigram, our bigram, and our unigram, but now the lambdas are dependent on what the previous two words were. So we can train even richer and, and more complex context conditioning for deciding how to mix our trigrams and our bigrams and our unigrams. So where do the lambdas come from? The normal way to set lambdas is to use a held out corpus. So we've talked before about having a training corpus. So here's our training corpus and our test corpus. A held out corpus is yet another piece that we set out, set aside from our data. And we use a held out corpus. Um, sometimes we, we use a, a held out corpus called a dev set, um, a development set, or other kinds of held out data. We use them to set meta parameters and check for things. So in this, we can use the held out corpus to set our lambdas. And the idea is we're going to choose lambdas which maximize the likelihood of this held out data. So here's what we do. We take our training data and we train some n-grams. Now we say which lambdas would I use to interpolate those n-grams such that it gives me the highest probability of this held out data. So we um, we ask, um, find the set of probabilities such that the log probability of the actual words that occur in the held out data are highest. Now we've talked about cases where there are zeros, so we haven't seen some bigram before, and we have to replace that zero count with some other count. That's smoothing. But what do we do if the actual word itself has never been seen before? Now sometimes that doesn't happen. In tasks where, let's say a menu-based task, where, we're, where we have a fixed set of commands, then no other words can ever be said. Our vocabulary is fixed, and we have a, what's called a closed vocabulary task. But lots of times, Language modeling is applied in cases where we don't know um, uh, any word could be used, and there could be words we'd never seen in our training set. So we call these words OOV, or out-of-vocabulary words. And one way of dealing with out-of-vocabulary words is as follows. We create a special token called UNC. And the way we train the UNC probabilities is we create a fixed lexicon. So we take our training data, and we first decide which we hold out a few words, the very rare words or the unimportant words, and we take all those words and we change those words to unk. Now we train the probabilities of unk like a normal, any normal word. So we have our, corp our training corpus. It has word, 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 and it has a really low probability word, 
word, word, word. And we'll take that word and we'll change it to unk. And now we train our bigram, word, 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 unk, word, 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 as, uh, just as if unk had been a word in there. And now at decoding time, if you see a new word you haven't seen, you replace that word with unk and treat it like, um, uh, get its, its bigram probabilities and its trigram probabilities from the unk word in the training set. Another important issue in n-grams has to do with web scale or very large n-grams. So we introduced the Google n-grams corpus earlier. How do we deal with um, computing probabilities in such large spaces? So one answer is pruning. We only store n-grams that have a very large count. So for example, the very high order n-grams, we might want to remove all of those singletons, all things with count one, um, because by Ziff's law, those, there's going to be a lot of those singleton counts. And we can also use um, other kinds of more sophisticated versions of this, where we don't just remove things with counts. We actually use compute the entropy or the perplexity on a test set and remove um, counts that are contributing less to the probability on a particular held out set. So that's pruning. And we can do a number of other efficiency thing. We can use efficient data structures like tries. We can use approximate language models, which are very efficient, but are not guaranteed to give you the exact same probability. We, can, we have to do efficient things like don't store the actual strings, but just store indices. We can use Huffman coding. And um, often, instead of storing our probabilities as these big 8-byte floats, we might just do some kind of quantization and just store a small number of bits for our probabilities. What about smoothing for web scale n-grams? The uh, most popular smoothing method for these very large n-grams is an algorithm called stupid backoff. Um, stupid backoff is called stupid because it's very simple, um, but it works well at the very large scale. And in fact, it's been shown to work as well as any more complicated algorithm when you have very large amounts of data. And the intuition of stupid backoff is if I want to compute the stupid backoff probability of a word given some previous wor set of words, I use the maximum likelihood estimator, this is the count of the words divided by the count of the prefix, if that count is greater than zero. And if not, I just back off to the, to the um, probability of the previous, the lower order n-gram prefix, with some constant weight. So it's, um, if, if the trigram, let's say, occurs, I just use the count of the trigram. If it doesn't, I take the bigram probability, multiply by 0.4, and just use that. And then when I get down to the unigrams, if I don't have anything at all, um, I just use the unigram. I just use the, um, the unigram probability. So um, we call this S instead of P because stupid backoff doesn't produce probabilities. Because um, to produce probabilities, we would have to actually use various clever kinds of weighting. Um, a backoff algorithm has to discount this probability to leave some mass left over to use the bigram probabilities. Otherwise, we're going to end up with numbers that are greater than one, and we won't have probabilities. But, but so stupid backoff produces something like scores, or or uh, rather than than uh, probabilities. But it turns out that this this works quite well. So in summary, for smoothing so far, add one smoothing is okay for text categorization, but it's not recommended for language modeling. The most commonly used method we'll discuss in the advanced section of this week. Um, is the, the Knaser-Nye algorithm, or the extended interpolated Knaser-Nye algorithm. But for very large n-grams, like situations where you're using the web, simplistic algorithms like stupid backoff actually work quite well. How about advanced language modeling issues? Um, recent research has focused on things like discriminative models. So here the idea is, pick the n-gram weights instead of picking them to fit some training data, whether it's maximum likelihood estimate or smooth, instead, choose your n-gram weights that improve some task. So we'll pick a uh, whatever task we're doing, machine translation or speech recognition, and choose whatever n-gram weights make that task more likely. Another thing we can do is, instead of just using n-grams, we can use parsers. And we'll see the use of parsers and statistical parsers later in the course. Or we can use caching models. 
In a caching model, we assume that a word that's been used recently is more likely to appear again. So the probability, um, the cache probability of a word given some history, we mix the probability of the word with some function of the history, how like how much how often the word occurred in the history, and we, we weight those two probabilities together. It turns out that cache models don't work in certain situations, and in particular, um, they perform poorly for speech recognition. So you should think about why that might be that a cache model performs poorly for speech recognition.